Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to beautiful Montana, where we are about to recover a D8 dozer that has been stuck in a hillside swamp for over two years. Buckle up, because this is about to get extremely interesting. Milk, whole milk, whole milk, whole Dude. milk. Gotta be whole. Probably better to buy it. It's gonna curdle in your stomach. And halfway through the drive, you're gonna be like, oh, I can't feel horrible. Oh. No, no. Now I'm gonna have to hear your belly aching all the way to Montana. That gate just went down on the side of the bed here. We just lost everything in the bed of the truck. Garage sale right here. Freaking side of the flatbed popped open and there was a nice coating of diesel fuel on the deck and everything just went straight into the ditch on that turn. That's wild. That is everything. Just slipped right off. Full blown clearance though. Hydration, it's key. Hydration. Guys, I need to show you a couple of very important things real quick. Number one is right here, my happy place. You see, this is a mountaintop in the hills above my house. And this is a spot where I come to relax, unwind, think, create. Basically just a spot where I can kind of be alone with my thoughts and I love it up here. Uh, and the second important thing, which allows me to relax up here, is this freaking awesome swinging camp chair. This is a really, really comfortable camp chair and it's compact, portable, it's sweet. And I bought it online and I'm not gonna lie, it was kind of obnoxiously expensive when I bought it, but I really liked it. So once I got it up here and I got used to using it, I was like, I should get a couple more for the family. So I went to the internet, started looking around and uh, I found you know different prices on them on different websites. And then I found some that had sold for $11 on a website called Deal Dash. Now Deal Dash is the sponsor of today's video and we've talked about them before. And basically what it is, an online bidding site where you can get stuff like this. It's like a $600 camp chair for $11. You can get things up to like 90, 95% off. They sell everything from camp chairs to cars and everything in between. And you guys know that we've talked about Deal Dash before, right? In fact, they sponsored one of our previous videos. And I wanna start with that because in that video, you know what, let me take a seat. I can't be sure while I talk to you about this. In that video, we talked about Deal Dash and we had a couple of different comments from people saying, hey, uh, Deal Dash, you know, sucks if you bid on something and you don't win it. Like, okay. Well, if that's the case, then we need to address these issues before we let them sponsor another video. So we did. For those of you who have never tried Deal Dash before, here's what we're gonna make happen for you. Basically, Deal Dash has agreed to make sure that anybody who bids on the website, if you're bidding and you don't win on an item, you're not gonna go home empty handed. We're gonna give you a free shirt, free Beast Power Gear t-shirt on us, on Deal Dash, uh, no cost to you, don't have to do anything. Get some bids, start bidding, 
If you win, great. If you don't, get a free t-shirt. It's that easy. Second of all, if you have a customer service issue, if you have a problem getting a hold of them, or if you have questions, complaints, concerns, whatever it is, we have a dedicated line specifically for our channel that's gonna get you directly to Deal Dash for like the most urgent, top tier customer service you can possibly get. And that line is heavy sparks at dealdash.com. That means all that's left for you to do is start bidding. So the way it works is you go to Deal Dash and you buy bid packing, buy 100 bids, 200 bids, 1,000 bids, however many you want. And you take those bids and you go to the online auction. And if you find an item you want, you start bidding. Every time you bid or somebody else bids, it raises the price of the item by just one penny. And you go until the other bidders don't want to bid anymore. And you have the opportunity to buy something like a $600 camp chair for $11. So it's pretty sweet. It's also kind of fun because you get wrapped up in like bidding and battling against these other bidders. So guys, all you have to do is click the link in my description below. Go to the Deal Dash website, buy a bid pack, and use the promo code HEAVYDSHIRT. And that, my friends, is going to get you a free t-shirt if you don't win on the item that you're bidding on. And if you do win or if you have questions, we've got that dedicated customer service hotline specifically for you. So I think we've addressed your concerns because that's what we do. We read comments. We hear your feedback. We don't want anybody to have a bad experience. We want you guys to have the best experience possible with the sponsor of our videos. Uh, also, huge shout out. Thank you to Deal Dash for continuing to sponsor the videos and allow us to do the stuff that we love to do that costs a lot of money to do. And uh, without sponsors, like them we wouldn't be able to do this so appreciate that so with that said guys all that's left to do start bidding click the link in my description below get some bids and go bid one penny at a time it's pretty awesome do we back up or do we go forward we wait for our wait for our team to show up bro i text you you text me? Yeah. What'd you say? Stop at the asphalt. Why? No place to turn around. It's real, real narrow right here. That's all right. We gotta get these paths close enough anyways. You said it's still seven miles. Uh, seven miles from here? You can't go any further? I mean... Well, we're gonna have to get the hoe further. I'll, I'll drag belly right there around this corner. Really? Unless we lift it all the way up. Yeah, just lift it up. Grab the truck up. Let's go check it out, I guess. There you go. What's your name? Chase. Chase? Yeah. Hey. Nice, nice to meet, meet you. you. Yeah. We made it. Coming. Yeah, absolutely, man. Happy to help. We got a little ways to go up this road, but about seven miles, you say? Yeah. Cool. All right. Should well, be interesting. this this will make it up, okay. and uh, you'll probably have a place to turn around too, so it okay. should be good. Cool. Yeah, we'll go take a look at it. Okay. So cool. let's cruise up there. Want to follow me? Yep. started yet and we're already kind of stuck kind of these are some tight turns on uh, some wild mountain roads and uh, I'm weighing like almost 50,000 pounds right now 
with this truck and trailer set up in the timbers. So we're gonna grab the het and uh, kind of pull uh, the ass end of my trailer around to make this turn a little less sharp. I can admit, a dog's gonna die today. <laughs> ah, frick. That is so hot. Let that cool down for a little bit. Alright. Yeah, I should have warned you how bad the road is. <laughs> yeah. Well, you see, we've got a lot of weight on this trailer. The trailer's operated by this uh, little, Let's grab, uh, the little tables. battery pack and an electric hydraulic motor that doesn't have the juice to lift this load of wood. That's the problem. That's the problem. Give her some juice, boys. That's all in the truck. Come on, Hunter. This is uh, Montana for you. Just a little bit of everything that can go wrong has decided to go wrong. That's what makes it fun. We had uh, two different things fail at once on us. The shift linkage on my truck, the plastic clip broke, so I couldn't shift it from the truck. I have to climb underneath it. Ah, frick. And then the jack on the trailer pretty much maxed out, but we're good now. It's going well so far, but uh, the hardest part is up ahead. Really narrow road, cliff. I'm a little worried for you guys, but I think it'll be good. This is just level one? This is, yeah, this is step one, dude. Many more levels to go. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are in beautiful Montana. 
not going to tell you exactly where because we don't want people coming here because this place is too beautiful, right? Exactly. Uh, and we've got ourselves a situation. This is my friend Chase. You guys may know Chase. Uh, you have a YouTube channel. Had yeah. You kind of still yeah. do. Sometimes What's the name of your channel? Adrenaline Addiction. You're a madman. Yeah, you jump, jump off, off stuff. stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. just off of really big stuff, and you're a cliff diver and exactly. base jumper. And so uh, Chase decided to settle down a little bit and come up here to Montana. And uh, he's got this beautiful mountainside villa, and he's got a problem in his front yard a D8 buried. And as cool, for me, that's a cool yard ornament. For you, <laughs> I don't you're, like ready, it. you're ready to get rid of it. <laughs> I've been staring at it for too long now, two years. Two years it's been yeah. stuck. So this D8 dozer has been stuck in his front yard up on this mountainside for two years. Now what the camera's not gonna do, is not gonna do any of this hillside justice. This is really steep, rugged terrain. In fact, we were working with some pictures that we got of this thing, and uh, I was like, ah, oh, it's easy. It's an easy pull. We'll get up there, get it knocked out. and. While it's not that difficult of a recovery, it's a very difficult location to get to. So now I understand why it's been stuck here for two years. There's a weird little fresh like water spring area right here in his front yard. His neighbor was cutting in the road, the dozer sloughed off the side and now he's sunk. So let's show you what we're working with. Oh. Dealing with an old D8 dozer it's old enough that it still has the pony motor it does not have a big electric motor on it oh, pony fun. motors you know they're for a lot of fun it's like a little gas engine you got to get running then you throw the valves closed and then it starts the big engine in theory you've had it running recently yeah a couple weeks ago perfect yeah it's it, not yours it's not mine it is hard to start though. yeah they are they are a bugger but we brought a little bit of everything to start it so we're gonna give her a go we've started three on the vlogs yeah that's, I'm trying to figure oh, out. Oh, I think that's the hand crank. I think the old school hand crank. Oh, uh, yeah. Like Supposedly, that. this is a six volt starter. Yeah. Um, and looks like that's going to be the only power we need. So let's try six volts there first. Yeah. Fun stuff. Old school design. Yeah, it is. This was all buried. Was like it? Up to here. So we dug this all out by hand. And I mean, this was all underwater, so we had to flush all the fluids out. Jeez. Everything was filled with water. Every crevice. It's exciting. Firm. Thanks for bringing the battery. Yeah. I didn't realize you took it out and charge it. Yeah. Okay. Don't do it. No. <laughs> Is this what you use to start the, start the engine with? <laughs> yeah, you go in the front and you just. Have your buddy get on the front and run him over. We gotta get this little engine running first and then that's gonna allow us to get the big uh, diesel engine running. And every old dozer has its own little farmer fixes. So there's like all the original keys and levers and knobs are different. And since I've never seen or touched this dozer before, it's gonna be a little bit of trial and error figuring out which knob or which lever does what because well, none of them are labeled and they're all custom to how this guy set it up, but we got to turn it over. Should be able to get it started.
Gotta pull that throttle right there. Choke skin. one main winch right now. So there's a tow hook up underneath the uh, dozer. It's on the belly part of it. I don't know how accessible it is that it's sitting right, right on the mud. So we've got a few options. We can either go to that tow hook or we can go around the, the blade, the big frame part of the blade. But then you run the risk of pulling the blade off, which would suck for the owner, but kind of benefit us because it'd be a lot lighter to work with. But I don't know. My vote would probably be the blade. So I guess we'll see what happens. We're back at the rig now and get it hooked up, see what see what we do. I'm optimistic, hoping that maybe just one pull right here will be what it needs. The problem that we're running into is we don't have a really good anchor system over here with the truck. Although the truck is parked downhill, so that definitely helps. These outriggers don't work very well. They're just digging in. We gotta get better outriggers. We might have to chain it to a tree, but uh, pull number one is just gonna be one straight line off the uh, deck winch. That's a, uh, I believe that's a 50 ton winch, so 100,000 pound winch. Let's see how it goes. It's coming down for sure. Just gonna see if my winch fairly gantry will hold up to this task. This will be the biggest test of it so far. And then uh, how are your shoes holding up? Well, they're good, man. I did this like rear twist to get extra tightness. Like four-wheel drive right now. I think we got her, boy. Got a nice tow hook down right up under the belly. We can run those big winches down, hook them right to that tow hook. Both winches. Both winches, I think. Yeah. When do you think we'll be out of here? Be out of here by noon. Make it to Idaho Falls in time for Lang Longhorn Steakhouse to open. Oh, <laughs> perfect. I love the odds. Right around 3 o'clock. The truck is in a really weird spot. And you guys already know this truck with the airbag suspension just kind of bobs and weaves everywhere it goes. So it kind of leaned against a tree and uh, we don't want to drive it until we're able to get it off the tree because the way it's leaning, it's pushing up against our uh, winch control uh, switch box. 
And if we lose that, then we lose all winch control, and that's not good. So we're gonna pull from that tree, pull the whole truck over a little bit, get it repositioned, and then pull the dozer again. We gotta get pretty much right in line with it. Otherwise, it's gonna try to pull the truck one side or the other. that's it for Montana we left last night left Salt Lake around 6 o'clock got into Helena Montana around 2 a.m. woke up at 7 got to the site to pull out the dozer around 9 pulled out the dozer in about an hour loaded up now it's about noon and we're headed home that was awesome that went way quicker than we expected in fact our original plan was we were gonna go into town and rent a big excavator, uh, and then we were gonna unload all these swamp mats, we were gonna haul everything up there, 
which I'm glad we didn't have to because it ended up being way up there. Like the pictures didn't do it justice. That was way, way up a windy mountain road and getting in an excavator plus all the swamp mats unloaded and up that hill would have been a fight. Luckily the het did exactly what it was supposed to do. Uh, used both rear winches, tugged the dozer right out and uh, she's free after being stuck for two years. So Chase is a super cool dude. He's a, uh, he has a big YouTube channel. Basically what he does is like he's a cliff jumper. He's a skydiver, he's a base jumper, just a extreme sports nut and a highly entertaining channel. So if you get a chance, check it out. Good recovery and now we've got about a seven hour drive home and we're gonna be home before dark, which is unexpected. I thought for sure we were gonna be home tomorrow morning early sometime or late in the middle of the night, but recovery went smooth as could be and uh, off we go. So again, guys, remember, if you have a recovery, a stuck vehicle, stuck tractor, a uh, unique piece of equipment, something that needs to be moved from a location to another that's big and interesting, hit us up, info at heavydsparks.com. If it fits within the realm of what we're looking for, we might come do it for you for free or very minimal cost, depending on where you're at, what, uh, what you got going on. So hit us up, info at heavydsparks.com.